Hi, and welcome to our end of April update from the Wealthy Doctor Institute, Intelligent Investing for the Busy Professional. We focus on simple battle-tested methods of investing that require just one adjustment each month to protect and build wealth. But first, breaking news. The long-anticipated book is finally out. Kind of. I went through the line edits, the copy edit, final tweaking of the galley proof. I must have read and reread my book dozens of times which kind of tells you that this book doesn't really take that long to read through. I try to keep things simple, and the book was submitted to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, iTunes, and somehow the books are listed as temporarily out of stock or requires special printing and will be shipped in one to two weeks, or some other nonsense. None of the other ebook formats are available on the sites yet either. And iTunes, they actually read each book before putting them online. So uh, it turns out that it takes three to six weeks for the other bookstores to get their ebooks on and make it official or something, so they say. Amazon even told us that they use that temporary out of stock sign to generate interest in a book to make it look like their book is so popular that it's sold out. I don't know. I don't like playing those games. If I'm going to serve my fans, I'd rather just be straightforward and transparent. But at least the links are available on my book website. Here it is. BusyDoctorsInvestmentGuide.com Don't go for the free chapter offer yet though. I'm still having problems getting that to work. So uh, what kind of launch or announcement is this? This book is available but not quite and you can't even get a free chapter. Why am I half-assing this? Well this is a good teaching moment. Uh, you heard the adage, good decisions come from experience and experience comes from bad decisions or outcomes. This is true. I'm doing something new, writing a book, gaining fans, teaching my systems in ways and scope I never dreamed about just a couple of years ago. So everything you want lies just outside your comfort zone. Man, writing a book has been more than just one big learning experience. It's forced me to learn new skills, pushed me beyond my comfort zone in so many ways, but knowing what I want to do, but not knowing how to do it. I've learned so much from other authors, basically learning a whole new industry of book publishing, learn how other people learn, not just how I understand myself learning. All this so I can serve you. I'd rather take action, be not so perfect, but at least get the word out, get the learning out, change lives for the better, rather than waiting for things to get perfect before acting. Doing nothing but waiting serves no one. And this is so true of investing too. This past month I've talked to several of you, all with a common scene. You're waiting for a book to come out before taking action. This despite already knowing all the investment principles from me talking to you, teaching you by my side, watching these monthly update videos. You know how to invest, but some of you are waiting to be experts before taking the first plunge. Ironically, it's only after taking plans that you figure out what you still need to learn and what works for you. Waiting and doing nothing helps no one. If I didn't get my butt off and take action, you'd never even know this knowledge existed. You'd never know that there is hope for the future. If you don't get off your butt and do something before you know it, a week, a month, a whole year passes. Year after year of doing nothing, waiting for a perfect time, waiting for perfect conditions, just to invest. But by waiting, you help no one, not your family, not your loved ones, and most importantly, not your future self. Your future self is such an abstraction that few can imagine it. But think of it. Remember 20 years ago. If you could just go back in time, what would you tell yourself? Think of what happens if you've been doing the same things you've been doing now for more than 20 years into the future. What would life be like then? If you can meet that you from the future, what would you think you could learn from him? Hell is meeting the person you could have been. Powerful words I once heard, but cannot track down its source. But sometimes the proper action is to wait. That's true. As physicians, we often see patients where the best course of action is to just turn the calendar pages. But we're also monitoring it in a systematic fashion. Same goes for investing. If you have a system and the system says, do nothing right now, then yes, follow the system. But if you have no system 
and you're waiting, you have no criteria to tell you when it's time to stop waiting and time to start taking action again. But wait, what if I make a mistake? Ah, that age-old question. And to be fair to ourselves, we work in a profession where the occasional mistake can have catastrophic consequences. As with life, most mistakes we make, or we see others make at M&M conferences, we can learn from. And the language that we use to describe ourselves in our world pretty much defines our world. Let's say we change the word mistakes to outcomes. We don't like the outcome, we change our action or lack of it. The real question is more likely, what if I invest and the market tanks? And that's exactly why we have systems. Trading and investing systems are a dime a dozen, involving anything from a few simple rules to having a complex set of high-speed computers identifying and exploiting quirks of the market. And if you heard that correctly, that means a system needs not be complicated. A system takes that gnawing sense of anxiety of continuously asking yourself, should I be in? Should I sell? And second-guessing yourself, and replaces all that human emotion, fear, greed, and doubt with an objective system that tells you exactly when to get in and when to get out. Which is a great segue to our monthly update, starting with the simplest one rule system, the 20 month moving average system. This system is about as black and white as it gets. When the S&P 500 is above its 20 day moving average, it's safe to stay in stocks and when it's below, get out. And either stay in cash or buy a bond fund. You can argue that right now the markets have gone up for six straight years and that if we were to invest right now, the markets might tank. That's true. There's always a possibility that the markets might tank no matter when you invest. And they did tank, like in 2000 and in 2007. And the system told us to get out. Remember, when the markets tank, even if they can lose 50% or more, it still takes several months for it to do so unless there's a nuclear war or something, in which case the markets would be a least of our worries. But look at this system. Our index mutual fund is currently sitting at $192.52 per share, and the 20-month moving average is at $176.78. Do the math, and you can see that we have a 8.9% cushion. That means if the markets were to tank more than 8.9% next month, which is rare, our system would tell us to sell. Can the system make a mistake? Well, if you see here in year 2000, there was a little whistle where one month the system said sell, the next said buy. There's another whipsaw back here in 1990. And yes, you do lose a little with the whipsaws. Think of it as the price we pay to avoid most of the big bear markets of 2000 and 2007. So here's the 20 month moving average rule. If the index fund is above the 20 month moving average, it's relatively safe to stay in the fund or its equivalent. Otherwise, get out. Think of the 20 month moving average as a safety belt. It only works if you watch it every month and take actions as needed. Now, next system. This is a whole completely different system. No moving average, just a monthly ranking of three mutual funds, then selling the bottom 25%, of your portfolio and using the proceeds to buy the top fund. In this month, the emerging markets have been coming back. It's time to sell 25% of our MRI portfolio and buy the emerging markets fund. So, so last month we were half in the index fund and half in the inverse fund. This month you're supposed to sell the bottom 25%, which is the inverse fund, and buy the emerging markets fund. So our model looks like 50% index fund, 25% inverse, and 25% emerging markets. And for some of you where last month you recognized that one index and one inverse cancels each other and you were 100% cash, Remember that if you were to buy 25% of the emerging markets, you would also have to buy 25% of the index fund to match this portfolio or its equivalent. So here are the MRI rules. 
pretty straightforward. Remember, even though we use the mutual funds themselves to calculate which rotation to make, we have the choice of either using the mutual fund itself or the corresponding ETFs. I use ETFs. So dollar cost averaging, just listing here to keep in mind, for savings, spending less than you make is key to any successful wealth building plan. And the 1% risk trailing stop method using a 25% trailing stop. You know how I feel about owning individual stocks. They carry idiosyncratic risk, which when compared to mutual funds, yes, there's potential for great reward as well as great loss. So again, here's a system to guard against catastrophic loss, but you must monitor and monitor at least monthly. Me, I monitor weekly, but that's me. So until next month, invest safely. Keep the questions coming. Believe me, no matter how clueless you think you are, you're not alone. And in fact, I was in the same clueless boat 20 years ago. There is hope.